Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me today for Stay Free with Russell Brand. And it is an extraordinary day for journalism. It's an extraordinary day for free speech because you can bet your ass that whatever you think of that conversation between Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin, if the globalist establishment could censor it and prevent you from watching it, they could. They can't. So what they'll do instead is tell you that it's propagandist, that Tucker's not a proper journalist. Indeed, I saw one ridiculous claim that we'll get into in a minute that Putin looked saggy and out of breath, that his eyes were hurting, that his mouth was melting, that he was drooling on screen, that he didn't look very well. Whoa, it's getting crazy in here. It's, a, it's an astonishing event, this, for members of our community, because if you are a regular viewer of independent media, many things that you heard Vladimir Putin explaining to Tucker Carlson you'll be familiar with. To you, things like the 2014 coup and its significance, that's not, what do you mean? What coup in 2014? Or the impeachment or encroachment of NATO on former Soviet territories, you'll be familiar with that. Or a verbal deal between Gorbachev and Reagan. You'll have heard that before. All of these things will be familiar to you if you take responsibility for watching independent media instead of propagandist media. Now, it would take a naive person indeed to assume that there's not such a thing as Russian propaganda. Of course there is. In fact, some great art came from the movement of Stalinist Russian propaganda. But Is there such a thing as Western propaganda? I would say so. If you're watching us on YouTube, eventually after the first 15 minutes or so, you're going to have to take that jump and join us in that free stream that's Rumble. Ask yourself this question. Why is Russia Today banned on YouTube? Is it because you're so vulnerable and so delicate that if you watched Russia Today and they went, Russia is a wonderful country, you'd go, yeah, Russia is a wonderful country. Bloody the West. This is it's like the simplification and reductivism that's applied to this to matters such as this. And indeed, the, the insulting superciliousness, the condescension, the way they regard you. They think that we are idiots. They don't think we're capable of watching an interview between Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin and going, mm, that's probably true. Mm, I don't believe that. It's a bit big, that room. That's an enormous carriage clock. Bloody hell. Don't ask. Uh, if Vladimir Putin says it's going to take him 30 seconds to answer a question, would you like to hear a little bit about history? It will take me 30 seconds. You better strap in for 30 minutes. Let's have a look at some of the headlines. Remember, uh, I want to say welcome to all of you. I want to say hello to Salty Lover, Midwest Steph, Gluis49, all my friends in the Rumble chat. I want to say hello to my Awaken Wonders like Chrissy Dawn and Cesa CO. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for supporting our work. Become a supporter if you can. We make additional content every week and we do live interviews that you can join. Stella Assange is coming up next week. Why? Because we care about journalism. Why? Because we care care that Julian Assange is even now in Belmarsh because do you want this the first person that can uh, <laughs> why don't you answer in the chat tell us, tell us now why is Julian Assange currently in Belmarsh if you can answer that question in the chat we'll send you a t-shirt Stella will be on to talk to us about that campaign because remember Julian Assange revealed information that had an adverse impact on the powerful Hillary Clinton didn't like those emails being released it turns out that the military industrial complex don't like war crimes being exposed Julian Julian Assange had a bunch of accusations and finds himself in Belmarsh without trial. Where's the principles of justice? Where is innocent until proven guilty? Where is the people before the government? Where are the principles that we were meant to enshrine and celebrate? Now, instead of this, we're told Vladimir Putin. Let's kind of just see the headline that said that... um, these are oh, the Sun one. I love the Sun. The Sun is a British newspaper. Look at look at this. Sickly Putin, not comfortable in his own skin as he sags and twitches and looks emaciated. Now, if you've actually watched this for yourself, you'll know that he did not look uncomfortable in his own skin or sag or twitch or look emaciated. He looked like he had an incredible grasp of regional history and politics, some co- a complex understanding of concepts such as nation. This is a very important interview. I know already that you're familiar with Edward Said's great work, Orientalism, where he introduced philosophically the concept that in the West we have a particular perspective of the Muslim world, that the Muslim world doesn't have a right to their own trajectory, that they don't have their own history, their own narrative, their own stories. And that's a pretty good approach if you want to conquer the Muslim world and get their resources, like in the Iraq war, like in the coming soon Iran war, like in the constant, the Suez Canal crisis. If you say, hold on a minute, aren't that... 
Uh, isn't that another region with its own autonomy and its own authority? Is this assumption of supremacy, does it mean that we're legitimizing an agenda that's not beneficial to ordinary Americans, not beneficial to ordinary Brits, but beneficial to the establishment elite? That's why they don't want you watching Vladimir Putin versus Tucker Carlson. Or indeed, even if you think it was a comfortable, cozy chat, who do you want to go in there? Do you want a journalist to go and interview Vladimir Putin and go, Vladimir Putin? I mean, Vladimir Putin was in the KGB. There's no question that Vladimir Putin has people killed. Vladimir Putin isn't like, he's not Dick Van Dyke, is he? He's like a serious dude. That's not the question. We're saying whose propaganda and whose agenda most negatively impacts you? Vladimir Putin's, who when you watch this interview, I think, and this I think is perhaps the most important point, I don't think he's expansionist. I'm not saying that Ukraine don't have their own autonomy and their own sovereignty and their own dignity, but there are other perspectives available. Indeed, what Putin offered at length and extrapolated on in some detail is that that region has a complex history and Ukraine and Russia could be regarded actually as a civil war rather than an international border dispute. In fact, in fact, in America, and maybe this is something we're going to see in coming years, were there secession? If we saw Texas say, we want autonomy, we want want to withdraw, or if you saw Florida withdraw and say, we don't want to be bagged up with the rest of this. How are we benefiting from being part of a nation, an imperialist project that taxes us without representation, that bombards us with media, that doesn't respect us and tries to censor us, that plainly thinks we're a bunch of idiots, perhaps you might withdraw. Imagine if Texas withdrew and then Russia started arming them. Or if you don't want to tax your imagination too strongly, what about the Cuban Missile Crisis, when for a moment it looked like on the border or near the border of the United States, there would be missiles. How did that go down? Did it go down well or did it nearly lead to a nuclear war? And indeed, in Russia, we're dealing with a nuclear superpower. So before you engage them militarily, perhaps consider a few little things like, I don't know, Armageddon. Let's see how the legacy media want you to think about this. While you're still watching us on YouTube, we'll talk about this, but eventually we'll be on that stream of freedom. Putin takes charge, say the BBC, state funded, member of the TNI. Remember how they behaved during the pandemic. Remember who's in they advocate for, remember who they work for, remember this is a centralist neoliberal establishment that wants you dumb and totally controlled. Uh, TV host gives free reign to the Kremlin. What do you want him to do? Jump on his lap like a disobedient ventriloquist puppet and pump him, punch him upside the chin. In Russia, you don't interview the president, the president interviews you. Any of you that have seen the propagandist filth surrounding the interviews around Zelensky, who indeed I respect, as I keep telling you, he's a comedian who now runs a country. What a great trajectory to go on. Have you seen the fawning sycophancy? Have you seen him appearing at the Golden Globes, taking an Oscar from, remember repetition, um, remember repetition, guys, if you're moderate, if you're watching the chat, just watch out for repetition. Like, have you seen all of that? That, the, the, pro the constant propaganda. We're not Asking whether or not Putin conveys a particular perspective, he's pretty plain on that. He does. What we're asking you is what's the impact of the propaganda that we're generally consuming? Softball questions, conspiracy theories, and a 30-minute history lesson. Well, I know that you lot ain't going to want to watch all of it for yourself, but we are going to talk you through some of the best bits as well as the reaction. Here are the things that I think are most significant. He says that Russia do not have an interest in expansionism beyond these regions where there are disputes that he is interested in negotiating a peaceful settlement with for. He reminds us that we already know, and you already know, if you operate in independent media spaces, if you watch Jeffrey Sachs, that Boris Johnson was sent out to Kiev to scupper a peace deal, specifically the Minsk Accord. They already had a peace deal. Zelensky had signed a peace deal. Then Boris Johnson came to town and with his usual adorable bumbling ineptitude, scuppered it. And how many people have died since then? The majority of whom are Ukrainian. So this is not anti-Ukrainian. I'm pro-Ukrainian. I'm pro-human life. I'm pro-peace, as I know you are too. As Muhammad Ali said, I ain't got no beef with a Viet Cong. Why, why are we marching us? around the world to have wars with people I never even met. There are things that I'm sure many of us would be willing to die for. Our family, our loved ones, our gods, our community, some of you, your sports team. But do you want to die for a globalist establishment that you know has been lying to you? Well, what about the Nord Stream pipeline? The Nord Stream pipeline's been blown up by Russia. Putin laughed about that because it's ridiculous. Let's have a look at a few moments. What's the, uh, what's the first sort of funny little bit that we thought? The history bit. Yeah, let's have a look at this. This is 
Like, you know, don't ask Vladimir Putin a question if you want a, a short answer. Tell us why you believe the United States might strike Russia out of the blue. How did you conclude that? It's not that America, the United States, was going to launch a surprise strike on Russia. I didn't say that. Are we having a talk show or a serious conversation? <laughs> Here's the we got Carlson laugh in there. I'm pretty, I'm impressed that he even had the courage to do that laugh. Also, what is that room he's in? It's a sort of ballroom. There's an interesting carriage clock. There's some interesting designs on the floor. There's an interesting echo in that room. They should have done something about the echo. The quote. <laughs> Thank you. It's a formidable, serious <laughs> Because your basic education is in history as far as I understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been spying on you for some time, very much like the American government who tried to prevent this interview happening when you were working at Fox News. Like, I'm not naive about Russia and Russia's nuclear weapons and Russia's agenda and Russia's intentions and people that have died as a result of messing with Russia. All we're really querying is, do you want to put another $60 billion into a war that's frankly unwinnable? No one wins wars against Russia. We know this. What worries me perhaps most of all is the fact that our autodidactic instinctive understanding of global politics is closer to the truth than what the globalist agenda has conveyed to us. Like, hold on a minute, you can't have wars with Russia, can you? Like, didn't Napoleon try that? Didn't Hitler try that? Haven't they got, like, nuclear weapons? And also, just bear in mind this idea. Putin has a vision for an end to this. We've started negotiations, we're up for negotiations, we will negotiate. What's Joe Biden telling you? Is there, a, is there, what's the end point for Joe Biden? Uh, and, and do you have any recent references of what the agenda of the military industrial complex might be? For example, I don't know, Afghanistan, a war that drains $2 trillion of, by the way, let me remind you, your money, your money taken to fund that war. And do you think Afghanistan's in a better state now? Do you think America's in a better state? I tell you, he's in a better state. Raytheon's in a better state. Lockheed Martin's in a better state. Curiously, you know, they spend uh, quite a lot of money lobbying and donating to the two political parties that run your nation, that control our nation, that control all of us, and then tell us that we mustn't watch this because it's propaganda. Mm -mm, I think propaganda is a two-way street. So if you don't mind, I will take only 30 seconds or one minute to give you a short reference to history. This is half an hour before that thing ends. Have a look at this lovely meme that was going around. Mr. Putin, why did you invade Ukraine? Four billion years ago, the Earth was in its cooling phase. But that is an interesting point, actually, in itself. You can go full screen now. Because in effect, no, on me, on me, God bless you. <laughs> on me, that's done. We've done that. So this is why I'm watching. Um, so like, uh, because a nation is a complex thing. A nation is also a construct. A nation is an agreement, an accord. For example, if you're American, you're watching this now, you might think, oh, you know, the border between the US and Mexico a lot of problems there, but you will be familiar, of course, that Los Angeles and Texas and San Diego, there's a reason that those states and cities have those names that are in Spanish. Yeah, so it's complicated. Where a country begins, when a country begins, where a country ends, when a country begins. These are interesting questions. They're not just, the Putin is mad and bad. Pay for a war against him, would you? And um, when you finish paying for it, how about you sling a few of your children on the pyre? And the bravest people, the boldest people, the people that are willing to give their lives because they believe in their nation are the very people that are exploited for their globalist agenda. Now, the most important thing, if you ask me, the most, oh yeah, let's have a look at the Nord Stream thing because that's an out and out example of a total and utter blag and also it's a little bit funny. Remember, if you're watching us on YouTube, we'll be there for another couple of minutes. We're there to invite you over to join our movement, to be part of this, where we respect what you think, we respect what you believe in, we respect your right to determine for yourself what's true and what's not true. That's what we believe in. Like, we might be making mistakes. We might be being naive in our assessment of Vladimir Putin. Guess what? I went to a state school in the UK. I might be wrong about a whole bunch of stuff. I learn all the time from watching these comments. Like, it's all a farce, Russell, says Sinet One. Nice jacket, Russell. I appreciate it. The CIA. Brilliant. There's been, like, the deep state stuff that comes up when he talks about Clinton, that Clinton said, yeah, Russia can join NATO. Then he went away and talked to the people that really run America. Russia ain't going to be in NATO. Very interesting. We learned a lot. We learned a hell of a lot. Let's have a look at this little moment uh, around the Nord Stream pipeline. Again, this is one of those things where you can trust your own instinct above the information you're given by 
by the propagandist globalist elite. When the Nord Stream pipeline blew up, that was vital to the Russian economy because shale gas was being transferred from Russia to Germany. Massive deal, really important. It got blown up. We were told Russia blew that up themselves. That doesn't make sense. It's necessary for their entire economy. And also, haven't we all seen Condoleezza Rice saying, like about 20 years ago, that America wants to capture the market of shale gas from the European nations and they have to break Russia's stranglehold on that industry? Didn't we say Joe Biden go, trust me, we'll, we'll find a way. This is when Joe Biden was more cogent. He could find his nose on his face. He said, like, you know, believe me, there are ways. We'll stop them. We'll stop them. And then, you know, they told us, oh, Russia blew it up. And then eventually we find, like, sort of, didn't they find, like, Navy SEAL boots down there or something? Like, Jocko Willink was standing going, hey, I've done it, guys, it's over. Like, it was bloody obvious what happened. It's bloody obvious. They're lying to your face because they don't respect you. They think that you're like children. They want to control the information that you gain access to so that you remain in the dark, dumb and compliant. What do you, you deserve democracy. You've got more in common with the people on the absolute other side of the political spectrum, the absolute other side of the cultural aisle. You have more in common with one another than the establishment elite. And once we understand that, once we appreciate that, once we act on that knowledge, for surely wisdom is acting on knowledge, then it's over. Their game is over. This is why this interview terrifies them. Let's have a look at the Nord Stream pipeline moment between uh, Vladimir and uh, Taka Islali. Who blew up Nord Stream? <laughs> you for sure. I was busy that day. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, it, do you have, do you have, <laughs> uh, Putin laughing hysterically, doesn't know what day it is, my laughing at nothing, mentally ill, crazy. Hold on a minute, Joe Biden's giving a speech. Oh, uh, number, dippity, bo, bo, like now, I don't even like being mean. As a man who believes in our Lord, I don't like to be mean about Joe Biden, but what he is, is the revelation that democracy is a farce. You would agree that because that person cannot run a country. Did not blow up Nord Stream. Thank you, though. You personally may have an alibi, but the CIA has no such alibi. The CIA did it like you imagined and assumed in the first place. You're right, as the great late Bill Hicks, that great American comedian used to say, you're right. You're right. Not those people who try to tell you how to think. You're right. Uh, do, do you have evidence that NATO or the CIA did it? You know, I won't get into details, but people always say in such cases, look for someone who is interested. But in this case, we should not only look for someone who is interested, but also for someone who has capabilities. Because there may be many people interested, but not all of them are capable of sinking to the bottom of the Baltic Sea and carrying out this explosion. These two components should be connected. Who is interested and who is capable of doing it? So that absolutely might be propaganda. But you have to bear in mind the possibility that we have been heavily propagandized ourselves. The most significant thing that comes out of this conversation, I believe, in essence, is that Putin is not interested in a wider war. I say this with all sympathy and respect for Ukrainian people. I say this in all sympathy and respect for service personnel from both sides that have died and in a prayer for the people that may yet die. This $60 billion bill that's you know been scuppered, delayed, but it may go through at some point in some new incarnation to provide further arms to Ukraine that will perpetuate an unwinnable war against a nuclear superpower. He explains it thusly, Putin. And the only way that you can dispute this is if you want to accept the framing that Putin is some kind of lunatic, a little bit like Hitler, that really there are sort of a, there is a Soviet agenda to sort of mongol around the world, like Genghis Khan acquiring new territories. But what seems more plausible and more likely is that they have historic connections in that region, that this, they're in Donbass, there are people that consider themselves Russian, that there's a lot of complexity. And our prayer is, given that we can't really do anything other than escalate and prolong this war, that better heads will prevail. Indeed, that the will of the people will prevail and will be brought to a succinct conclusion soon. We're going to have to leave YouTube in a minute, but I just want to just show a little bit of the conversation around the wider world where, where, where Putin says we ain't got no interest in getting into Latvia or getting into Poland and stuff. It's expensive. And I was thinking, like, you know, who is the expansionist nation? You know, like in like the last four days, the United States or the military industrial complex, the globalist establishment that have captured your country. They've bombed Yemen. They've bombed Syria. They won't rule out bombing Iran. What, who's the military expansionists here? You think 
NATO is worried about this becoming a global <clears throat> war or a nuclear conflict? At least that's what they're talking about. And they're trying to intimidate their own population with an imaginary Russian threat. This is an obvious fact. And thinking people, not Philistines, but thinking people, analysts, those who are engaged in real politics, just smart people understand. Even if you disagree with every single word I've said, all of my analysis, I would completely respect that. But would you not say that it's absolutely vital that you're able to watch this stuff for yourself? Doesn't it seem weird to you that YouTube have banned Russia today, that only platforms like Rumble will include this stuff? Now, listen, we're going to leave YouTube in a minute, but we're broadcasting so much more. We've got so much more content. We've got content about the deep state. We've got, we've got content about the military industrial complex. We've got content about the legacy media. I want to tell you about our Awakened Wonder community where we make additional content every single week where we do live interviews with proper journalists. If you're watching us on Rumble, by the way, like and subscribe. It really helps us. If you're watching us on YouTube, you've got to come over. Now, you will have noticed that today I look a bit red. That's because I love the Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and sometimes I don't know if the Brazilian jiu-jitsu loves me. I've gone a little beat, beat up and a bit smashed up today, but I'm lucky that I use Charlize, one of our sponsors, and a glorious one, Charlene, who started this company, good, solid American woman. She's on one of Biden's hate lists because she didn't respond too well in the pandemic period. And she's created this beautiful, toxic-free cosmetics brand. Toxic-free, so good this stuff is you could drink it. I can't because, as you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, 21 years, clean and serene, thanks to the grace of God. This stuff's in high vibrational Ital Italian glass. And this toner, I mean, it might sting now because of the, uh, the jujitsu stuff, but um, oh, now that's it. That's a shot in the face I'll take, baby. If you think you would benefit from these beautiful apple stem cells that work on human skin and rejuvenate, am I looking rejuvenated? Am I looking rejuvenated? Did you know that I'm in my mid 70s? Were you aware of that? You can uh, get a 25%. How was the discount we're offering today? You can get a 25% discount for this, or, you know, it's coming out to Valentine's Day, isn't it? Mad, mad holiday, really. But if you celebrate stuff like this, or if you're a person like me that cares about your skin, go to charlize.beauty and use the promo code brand to get this beautiful, beautifully packaged uh, set of cosmetic products. There's a lovely moisturizer, there's a toner, there's lip balm, it's all fantastic. And I really appreciate these people supporting our show. Cause you know what? The British government tried to shut us down. The globalists, at Alphabet tried to shut us down, but some people believe in freedom. Okay, thank you. So uh, take advantage of that offer if you can. Now, thank you. 10 years like younger, they're saying in the Rumble chat. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, start the countdown. If you're watching us on YouTube, guys, you're going to have to click the link in the description because we've got more fantastic analysis. We're going to be talking about the pipeline, mainstream media. Why are the US involved in this in the first place? And the complex concept of a nation and our ability to have perspectives that differ from one another. And what has NATO done for you? lately? Well, without NATO? Well, I don't know. I mean, they've been they've been mowing my lawn. NATO have been helping me. What have NATO done for you lately? You fund them. What have the WHO done for you lately? You fund them. What's the government done for you lately? You fund them. Join us on Rumble right away. We